What's up guys? In this video I'm going to be showing you the safest way to do the solo flawless uh, Warlord's Ruin dungeon. So before we get into it, let me just uh, give you a breakdown of my build. So for this flawless run I'm using the Dawn Chorus Helmet, the Dragon's Breath Exotic Rocket Launcher. Let me just take you through my subclass here. So I'm using the Daybreak obviously because the Dawn Chorus gives you that enhanced Daybreak. Also buffs your Scorch damage from all sources by 200%. So using Healing Rift just for extra, uh, extra survivability in case my restoration runs out. Got Incinerator Snap. I just find it scorches better and ignites quicker. We've got the Healing Grid, obviously to synergize with the Touch of Flame, which is going to give me the restoration times two. Icarus Dash just for mobility. And we have Ember of Empyrean, which states that solar weapon or, file, or ability final blows extend the duration of Restoration and Radiant. Uh, Ember of Singeing, so when I scorch targets, it actually recharges my uh, class ability, so in this case the Healing Rift. We have Ember of Solus, so when you activate Radiant or Restoration, you have a, a bigger window to keep it uh, active. An Ember of Ashes here, which increases the scorch, scorch stacks you apply to targets, meaning that you have more uh, ignitions. And I got the Scatter Signal with the Overflow and the Control Burst perks. So Overflow, when you pick up Special or Heavy Ammo, lowers its, capac lowers its weapon beyond further capacity than normal. So you can sometimes get like 16 shots a clip so it's obviously really handy in damage phases and the control burst then when you have every shot in a burst grants this weapon increased damage and reduced charge time for an improved duration so i feel like these two are probably the best perks you can get craftable for this uh, weapon got the epochal integration and the roll i got on this one that's not so important to keep away but the incandescent is what makes this gun for me it's a lot of uh, red bar ads in this dungeon. And uh, yeah, they all obviously just, you know, if you kill one, you just send up like a chain reaction around ads around it. Especially with the Dawn Chorus helmet, obviously the scorch damage is uh, largely uh, increased. And then we have the Dragon's Breath. Obviously it's a really high damage uh, rocket launcher. Obviously pairs really well with the Dawn Chorus helmet here. And for the seasonal artifacts, not too important really, it's just the, it's all the, uh, whatever you fancy in this case, but in the second column obviously I got the uh, Kindling Trigger, which causes more Scorch to uh, end Scorch combatants when you're Radiant. A Blast Radius is for armor charges when, uh, with rocket kills. <clears throat> I had to pick this Origin perk specialization as the uh, my hand cannon as the uh, nanotech tracer rockets, so it just gives that a bit of a boost. Nothing too crazy, obviously. And from whence you came, increases the ability damage to take in the scorn combatants, which obviously this dungeon is full of both those enemy types, so that is probably a, a, that's pretty much an essential in this dungeon. We got flint striker. So rapid uh, precision hits with solar weapons make you radiant. Revitalizing blast, which is causing damage with a solar ability, weakens champions and bosses for a short duration. Any little helps, basically. Got the unraveling orbs. So when you get an orb of power, the damage that I do from the uh, scatter signal fusion rifle uh, gives people a, a unraveling the unraveling uh, debuff. And then for the last column, I swear, obviously, a must is the solo operative perk. Gives you an extra 15% damage to all sources. And Argent Ordnance. When firing a rocket launcher, consumes one stack of armor charge. Uh, granting increased damage and reload speed until you reload or store your rocket launcher. Which is pretty good, especially in the final stand of the last boss. And then my mods here for the build. <coughs> So powerful attraction. Uh, just basically when you activate the healing rift, you, any orbs in the sort of near area will 
attract you. Got proximity ward just in case you are on low health for whatever reason. And an enemy is finishable, it'll just give you a, a strong overshield. And bomber then uh, reduces grenade cooldown when using your class ability. So if I use my healing rift, it will actually cause my healing grenade to recharge faster. On the legs, I've got innovation. So again, when picking up an orb of power, my healing grenade recharges quicker. Obviously, I want as much healing grenade uptime as I can, just so I can get that restoration times too, if I happen to run out of enemies or or something. <clears throat> we got recuperation. If, for whatever reason, restoration times two isn't procced, I can obviously just pick up an orb of power just for some extra health. And harmonic scavenger, any armor bricks that drop, I can get more uh, Dragon's Breath ammo from uh, brick pickups. And then for the chest piece, I always leave Concussive Dampener on. <clears throat> and I, yeah, and throughout all this dungeon, I kept her as Void and uh, Solar Resistance, just because they seem to be the most uh, prevalent damage types in the, uh, in the dungeon. I know you have Arc with like the Arc Scions and the um, the Ogre boss on the boss 2 in the dungeon, but they're not really too damaging. The Gauntlets, they went with the triple uh, harmonic loader just to increase that uh, reload speed if the perk on the Dragon's Breath doesn't happen. I can just reload it as quick as possible. And for the helmet then, I have the uh, heavy ammo finder and special ammo finder just for obviously the uh, as much ammo as possible for the Dragon's Breath and the Scatter Signal Fusion Rifle and Harmonic Siphon just to generate orbs from either Dragon's Breath or my Hand Cannon. So there you have it, a look into my build. Now we're getting to the dungeon. So firstly I just want to uh, apologize for the croaky voice, I've uh, obviously got some sort of cold this week. Obviously it had to happen the week I decided to do a commentary video. But shit happens. Uh, I'm also not going to talk through the entire dungeon. I just want to give you some uh, oversight into each encounter. But what I have noticed uh, since the Tuesday update, the uh, 7.3.5, is that the uh, Ember Empyrean artifact actually extends your restoration now up until 15 seconds instead of 12. And the uh, Dragon's Breath ammo, I'm sure last week uh, when I was using it, it was... Uh, all the solar reserves on your chest pieces only made it up to 10 max rockets. But uh, now I've noticed in this dungeon, I think since the update, uh, since Tuesday, you can actually now carry uh, 12 rockets, which is obviously a massive uh, damage bonus. So here on the first encounter, like I did in my last video, or oh, if you haven't seen that, I'll put that up in the uh, uh, up on screen right now. Um, if you didn't already know, you can put the uh, reserve mods on your chest piece, uh, swap it out, rally to the flag, and then swap back to your good chest piece. It will you will keep your extra uh, ammo you gain from the other chest piece. So in this encounter, the hardest part of this encounter is probably just finding the eyes in this cage. So my only advice would be really just to take your time. Also, I know you have to be quick as the cage is timed or you die. But don't uh, panic is basically the point I'm trying to get at. For each of these damage phases, you want to just basically focus on one totem. If you're trying to go for two, you either run out of time or you just get killed. So just focus on one totem, ideally the one furthest away from the boss. And for this build, also, as you can see, I tag him with a Dragon's Breath rocket then and load on him with a super. Use a melee just for that uh, extra weakening effect. And unfortunately, that's why I have to stop it, I was getting battered by ads. But thankfully for the restoration times too, you know, I didn't come to him. I didn't come close to dying at all. So again with all three of these encounters, you just want to basically take your time with the ads, make sure you get as much ad control done as you can. As you can see, there's totems right next to him, or there's one right at the back of the map here. Obviously, 
go for the one on the back of the map for that, uh, you know, less risk of dying. <coughs> As you can see the imminent wish count is going down, so just before I hit zero, tag in with a Dragon's Breath rocket, just to start that damage phase. And unfortunately I don't have my super, but uh, just obviously do as you can until the next uh, damage phase. So I think in this encounter I actually managed to get, I probably could have got a four phase, but unfortunately I, I done a five phase instead. But don't panic, obviously this is a flawless run, so if it takes you an extra you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes, you know, it's better to do that than to obviously like, fuck up at the end. So again, just before you get teleported to the cage, try and get as much ad, uh, ad control done as you can. So when you jump out of the cage, obviously there's not, a, uh, there's not too many ads left to deal with. And you can actually use the totems as a bit of cover as well. So you can jump in and sort of like hide behind the totem for a rift down. This is going to be the last damage phase here. Get that in and wish down. And tag it with the dragon's breath and spam with the super. Job done. And throw some daybreak at the chimera just for fun. So in the prison, I'm assuming everyone knows by now, but if you don't, as you can see, that skeleton's right hand was pointing to the right side. And it was two dashes on the stone, which basically just means you've got to get two of the six of these cogs spinning to the right. And there's six in total, so that means the other four cogs have to turn to the left. So shoot them once to turn them left, shoot them twice shoot them twice to uh, sorry, three times to turn them to the right. And then once you done all the uh, six cogs you can just shoot the key that's blinking on the right side of the screen now there we go job done
So I believe on this bit it's just four spikes you have to watch out for. So that one there you just jump over. Then these ones here you just slide under. And the next spikes then you just keep to the left. And the last spikes you just jump over. And that's all you have to worry about. There's only four sets of spikes. So just keep that in mind. So for this part up here, I obviously just decided to run past all the enemies and get to the next section as quick as I could. But if you want to stop and kill every enemy, if that's you know, what makes you feel safer, then you go ahead and do that. You just got to watch out for that Chimera boss as well, because he will spam me from, uh, from the sky. So for this encounter, same again, rally to the flag, swap your chest piece out for the one with the solar reserves on, and then swap it back to the uh, good chest piece, get as many uh, rockers as you can. So for this encounter I tend to keep to the right, as I find you have more cover from the boss. <coughs> so let's kick this encounter off. So as you can see all the acolytes, the taken acolytes and the minotaurs will spawn. It's entirely up to you if you want to kill the minotaurs now or after you uh, get the uh, torches. So as you can see there, obviously got uh, lost my shields, threw a grenade, a healing grenade at the floor. And now everyone I kill is just basically uh, restoration uptime. So just do a little bit of ad control, then just work on the eyes. Like I said, if you want to kill the Minotaurs now or a bit later, it's up to you, but do not leave them until you do the damage phase, obviously, because they will be a right pass when you come for damage. So in this bit, I like to just hide here, wait for him to spawn his first totem, jump in the totem, kill him while I'm actually uh, activating the totem I'm standing in, wait for that to be done, run to the torch to defrost myself, and once I'm fully defrosted, run back for the second totem and capture this one. So, hopefully, so uh, I hope you can see the, the synergy with the build, with the healing grenades and obviously the uh, Ember of Empyrean. It's so handy. 
and obviously with the orbs I get innovation so I can get my healing grenade back even faster if I do happen to lose the restoration times too. I personally think this is a, a great build for just survivability and damage. And every time after the blizzard, the, uh, there will be two yellow bars uh, spawn, that spawn <coughs> with snipers. So make sure you take them out either side, as they do obviously, they will cause a massive damage to you and could potentially end your uh, flawless run. So it will be two on the left side and two on the right side. So what I, like, what I like to do is to uh, take out all the eyes and just leave one until I'm ready. And then as soon as I'm ready I can just pop that last eye and then uh, get into it. So again, jump into the totem. As you're actually in that totem, break the uh, sort of mini boss there. <coughs> And as you can see, time-wise, we've got plenty of time. I think it, I think it takes about, say, uh, about seven, six or seven seconds to capture a totem. So once the imminent wish for, uh, buff is gone, the two yellow bars will spawn in. So that's one. There's two. And that's the right side taken care of. So when it comes to actually doing damage to the boss though, I leave the eye on the far left alive. I'll get more into that why in a second. So I'm just doing uh, ad control right now. Obviously take out the yellow bars on the left. So now I've got the four torches in the middle, ready to go. I'll take out the minotaurs and any ads in the middle. And again, you've always got to watch the scorn spawning in on the left and right. <coughs> Excuse me. So both Minotaurs are dead. Now I can just start planting the torches. So for the damage phases, I like to start at the. Uh, I like to initiate the damage phases from the back left, right under the uh, acolyte eye. Just because you usually on the first phase you usually have all your supers, you have you have all your abilities ready to go. So it's just easier to survive on the first uh, the first lantern. And be careful when you are jumping near the edge, obviously as the ogre boss with the arc um the like arc blast can knock you off the edge, so just be careful of that. Just before I take the last torch over, just want to do some ad control. For the damage phase, hit him with the same as the first boss, hit him with the dragon's breath and spam the super at him. And 
I should have used my melee first, but yeah, it's all good. So in each of these uh, beacons, you just want to basically just blast the boss with everything you can, get as much damage on him as possible. So as you can see, I'm not too bothered by adds, as obviously I killed as much as I could before I even started the damage phase. So it just helps with obviously survivability and the less bothered you are by adds, obviously the more damage you can put on the boss. I think we actually get a comfortable three phase with this, uh, in this encounter, so it's pretty good. There we go, so once the damage phase ends, just run back under here run under cover, kill some ads and, and kill some ads and job done. <clears throat> and we just rinse and repeat. So if you do that in three phases like me, or if you do it in you know, four, five, six, you know, it doesn't matter at all. Just rinse and repeat that. I'm just swapping chest piece again just to obviously get as much ammo as I can from the floor. And after the damage phase, the Minotaurs will spawn back in as well, so don't forget to take them out before the next damage phase starts. <coughs> I'll leave you watch the rest of this encounter in peace. I'll speak to you soon.
So on this bit here, obviously just run through the path. Nothing complicated here, but I just wanted to jump back into here just uh Just to make you aware of obviously the path I take and why I take it. So make sure you just kill all the ads. You don't want any you know any risks, just eliminate it as quick as possible. And obviously just watch all the taken blights that uh so push you out from the walls. So just keep to the right. This rock that I'm this rock that I'm about to jump up to, obviously it falls after like two seconds, so just make sure you just get off that as quick as possible. Just keep to the right. The enemies behind me obviously were all like praying, just ignore them. And watch out for the snipers from across the, the way. So I, I just swapped to a, a bow, just to take them out quick and easy. So just make sure you take out all the enemies from back here. Just so you're nice and safe. <coughs> Excuse me again, sorry. And then swap it back to the build. And then I like to just fly over to the right side here. Just keep bright as possible. And you can get to the exit within two jumps. So don't go through that doorway, as I think there is a phalanx in there, he might just uh, knock you off the edge, or it's just a dodgy place to go. So I prefer to go on the outside. So this bit, as you can see there, the phalanx is almost all pushed me off the edge. So avoid that, and just do, uh, just go super straight away, just take everyone out as quick as you can. You don't want to fail the, this far into the dungeon, <coughs> and because just a phalanx knocked you off the edge. Not the way anyone wants to go. So for this bit, again, obviously you don't want to just you know you don't want to fall off the edge. So just take out the two eyes you see there and jump from here straight over. <coughs> For this bit, don't run past any enemies, just take out every enemy you see, just... You don't want to risk of getting pushed off the edge or just sniped from far away. So, jump across here, and right in this door on the left here is going to be a phalanx, so make sure you you kill him quick and he doesn't push you off the edge. So with every encounter, every traversal in this dungeon, just take your time. Take out the enemies nice and quietly. <coughs> and on the left up here is another phalanx. Just make sure you take him out obviously before he blasts you. And now here just go all out. Kill every enemy you see. Have fun.
So for the third and final encounter of this dungeon, again, get as much ammo as you can. And for this encounter, I like to stick to the right again. Just find there's a bit more cover here from the boss. Because this boss has got a nasty bit of splash damage. So throw a healing grenade down. Activate the restoration times two, and then just obviously kill the eyes you see. <coughs> Make sure you take out these wizards before you start shooting the eyes of the boss. You don't want the big guy spawning in with all the wizards and the scions. So in this encounter on all phases, you're only focusing on one of the uh, mini bosses. So obviously in this case, I'm focusing on the one on the right. So as soon as the totem spawns, like on the second boss, jump in the first totem, kill him, and then obviously you can get the two totems at once if you're lucky. And with these hex guys, as soon as the two totems are done, just smack them, deactivate the hex, and then obviously just run away until they're dead. So that imminent wish is about to down to one second to prepare for the damage phase. Just like all the other damage phases, tagging with the dragon's breath and then just spamming with your super. Just try and do as much damage as you can. And there's no time limit obviously on this dungeon. Or Unless you're trying to do like a personal record, but in my case, this is um, obviously first time going solo, flawless. So just take your time, gather all any ammo and stuff you need, and then when you're ready, just proceed on to the next phase. So on this part, we just want to stick on to the uh, right side again. Like the first phase, it's just got a lot more cover. I don't know how I'm missing all those shots there. <laughs> So as you can see, Restoration Times 2 is not going anywhere, as long as it adds around. You should have Restoration Times 2 all the time, you should be nearly unkillable. So again, exactly the same. As soon as he spawns in, wait for him to spawn the first totem. And jump in the totem, and then you can kill him. Hopefully the two circles will be uh, linked up. Hit him, deactivate the hex. Wait for that imminent wish time to come down. So again, after each uh, damage phase, just take your time, gather whatever ammo you need. Because <clears throat> this next phase, I'm about to take the, uh, the whole, uh, take your time to a whole new level. <laughs> so this part of the uh, final boss is probably the most risky. We have the most chance of dying. On this one, I actually like to keep to the left. 
This is, just seems to be a bit more clever and uh, just seems to be a bit quicker to uh, get the totems. There's obviously so many signs of spawn up here. And I love the incandescent obviously with this hand cannon because obviously the signs uh, multiply. So the incandescent and the scorch just takes them up before you have a chance to do that. So when you're ready, take out the, the acolyte eyes. And again, once the mini boss spawns in, we're just gonna wait for him to spawn the first totem, jump into it, kill him as quick as we can, and then hopefully get the two totems. Timer obviously on the, uh, the hex. And then watch the imminent wish timer on the left again, just before you can damage the boss. Unfortunately, here, this damage rate, I don't have my super ready, so it's a bit weak. This is probably the first time in the entire dungeon I actually. Don't have a healing grenade and restoration active. Once you've got the ad control down, take out the eyes, <coughs> spawn in the mini bosses. We're trying to spawn our first totem. This damage phase, you obviously just want to get the kill all the ads that you can. It honestly felt like my bullets were just going through them at that point. I don't even know what was happening. And that's probably the closest I came to dying in the whole dungeon. But as you can see, obviously, just, just back away and then you know, uh, collect yourself. Right, so for this bit, I'm gonna take the take your time to a whole new level. Uh, obviously, as this dungeon isn't timed, you can just sit behind this rock here, and you can wait for your super to come back. Obviously, you've done an ammo run. So what I do, I, what I like to do is just sit here, wait for the super to come back. So just hide behind that rock till the super's back. Jump up to the first platform. And just hit him with everything you've got. So I can weaken him with the melee, shoot a dragon breath, and then spam him with the daybreak. And put as much damage as you can on him for each phase. Once the uh, super runs out, just stay up there as long as you can, use the pillar for cover. And once that phase is over, run back down to the uh, area where we just come from. And then just do the same again. Just rinse and repeat for the three areas. You know, you could argue this is like a sort of a, um, a bitchy way to play, but 
it gets the job done. And, uh, that's what it's all about. And it's all, um, you know, and obviously this method is very, very safe. So the second phase, wait for Super to come back. Jump up to the second platform. Let's save again. So we can drag his breath. Super. Use the grenade just for that survivability. Once he disappears, run back down. Get any more ammo you can. And obviously just wait for that super to come back for the third and final time. Just having a quick look for any more ammo. So for the third and final uh, platform up here, I just wanted to leave this uh, clip in here just because uh, in about five seconds you're going to see me do a huge uh, mess up. Yeah, you just got to watch out for those taken blades, they will obviously hit you off the platform. That could have obviously been a lot worse, I could have obviously been pushed off and fallen to my death. And obviously nobody wants to ruin a solo flawless run by that method. Quickly back up to the third platform. And exactly the same again. Just so weaken, drag his breath, daybreak. My face seems shorter than the other two for whatever reason. So now we will tele uh, teleport you back down to the first phase. And it's just rinse and repeat now until you get into the final stand, so... I think we managed to stay in this area and then go up to the um, next area. And then I actually get him into final stand, so we don't actually have to go back up to the, the highest risk uh, area again. So exactly the same with the first round to stay on the right, kill all the ads, once you're ready, shoot the eyes, spawn the mini boss in, get the two totems, and then go for damage phase again. So unfortunately there I wasn't able to get him up to the next area, so just gonna have to do exactly the same again.
So there we are, on to the next area. Quick uh, ammo run. Quick ad clear, kill the wizards. Now I'm uh, ready to take out the acolyte eyes. No, actually, after these enemies spawned in. I pop my super here trying to get him down to that uh, final stand phase and I just obviously missed a couple of seconds. So yeah, apologies, I thought I actually got him to final stand then uh, from memory but um, yeah, we have to go back up into this area, sorry, one more time and then uh, we're into the final stat phase then. <coughs> so exactly the same as last time. Kill all the ads, kill the wizards, kill the eyes. And as you can see, I'm nowhere near my uh, super being ready, obviously, as I just popped him before we come up to this level. So just go all out with your Dragon's Breath in this case. As you'll see here in just a second. Super's only just over half, so no chance of getting that back yet. So I'll just pelt him with all the dragon's breath I got. And now he's in final stand, exactly the same, just hit him with everything he got. Try and kill him as quick as you can. Use the pillars for cover, use any rifts or keto grenades. And there you have it. That's the Chimera defeated. Warlord's Ruined Dungeon finished. A little healing rift, healing grenade, uh, random shots celebration there. And as you can see, all the uh, challenges and the triumphs and titles are coming up now. This is all that remains of the and now my super's back. Uh, I decided to have a little daybreak celebration on top of the tower. Worlds. The damage the scorn could have caused had one of them 
So guys, if uh, if you enjoyed that and found that helpful, and if you like these um, commentaries and more in-depth uh, videos, uh, just let me know in the comments down below. And uh, leave a like and a sub if you uh, found this helpful. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.